On the evening of the 26th of May 2013, in the English town of Wellington in Shropshire, Georgia Williams, a 17-year-old red-haired girl and aspiring model and REF paramedic, went to visit a friend. She never returned home. What follows is the heartbreaking story of how an innocent 17-year-old girl fell into the clutches of a friend and how her friend had been known to the police for a number of years. Georgia Lynette Williams was born on the 7th of September 1995 in Wellington to parents Steve and Lynette Williams. She had an older sister, Scarlett, five years her senior. Three weeks after Georgia's birth, her father, Steve, achieved his lifelong dream of becoming a fully-fledged police officer and the whole family attended his passing out parade. When Georgia began school, school life was initially not easy. She was bullied quite badly. Georgia, however, was always a resilient young girl. Although her mother offered to move her to a different class away from her bully, Georgia refused the offer and instead stood up to her bully. As she grew older, Georgia became a fine sportswoman and joined her local air cadets, achieving the rank of corporal. She also served as a counsellor to victims of bullying and was elected head girl. She was known to be extremely kind and caring and was therefore extremely popular. Georgia began attending New College Telford, where she studied biology, sports and psychology. She aspired to become a paramedic in the RAF. To earn some money outside of her studies, Georgia began working part-time at a local petrol station, where she frequently worked alongside an older man named Jamie Reynolds. Jamie Reynolds was five years older than Georgia. He had been in the same school year as Georgia's sister Scarlett, although they were not part of the same social circle. Georgia felt that Reynolds was something of an outcast among the other employees, so she befriended him and included him in the group's social activities. The two became good friends. Reynolds quickly became very fond of Georgia and asked her on a date, though she turned him down on multiple occasions as she already had a boyfriend. Reynolds, however, refused to accept Georgia's courteous rejection and became persistent frequently asking her out on dates. Despite this, Georgia and Jamie Reynolds remained friends. At the age of 22, Reynolds was dissatisfied with his life. He did not enjoy his job in the petrol station and wanted to be a professional photographer. He needed to create a portfolio of his work and requested the help of 16 local girls, all of whom he knew, to participate in a simulated hanging. Several girls were willing to help and Reynolds asked them to come to his house on the evening of Sunday the 26th of May 2013, when his parents would be on holiday in Italy, to model for photographs so he could realise his ambition of becoming a photographer. Georgia agreed to help Reynolds with his photography project, and agreed to visit his home to model for photographs. She knew several of her friends would be attending the photo shoot, so she had no reason to worry. On the evening of Sunday the 26th of May 2013, Steve Williams returned from work. It was a warm, sunny evening, and because of this, the family decided to have a barbecue. The Williams family were present, as were all of Georgia and Scarlett's grandparents, in addition to several aunts and uncles. However, the family barbecue coincided with Jamie Reynolds' photo shoot. Steve and Lynette encouraged Georgia to attend the photo shoot another time and stay with the family instead. Georgia, not wanting to disappoint her friend, politely declined the offer. As Reynolds lived only five minutes away from the Williams family's home, Georgia thought the photo shoot would, would be a relatively quick one. She went upstairs, changed into a black leather jacket, a baggy t-shirt and black skinny jeans, and put her hair in a ponytail. When she came downstairs, Steve said she looked beautiful and that she looked like Sandy in the 1978 film Grease. Georgia left the family home at 7.30pm and began the five-minute walk to Jamie Reynolds' house. What Georgia did not know was that none of her other friends would be attending the photo shoot. She entered Reynolds' home to model for his simulated hanging. Shortly before Georgia arrived, he messaged her saying, Please don't be late, I'm so excited. When Georgia had failed to return home by 10.30pm, her mother messaged her, asking where she was. Georgia replied, saying the photo shoot had ended some time earlier, and that she had been out with friends ever since and that she would be home later. Georgia signed off with three kisses, as she did in most of her messages. Reassured by this message, Steve and Lynette went to bed. Unbeknown to them, 
the message was sent not by Georgia, but by Jamie Reynolds. On the morning of Monday the 27th of May, after Georgia was still not home by half six a.m., Lynette sent her daughter another message, asking where she was and what time she would be home. Reynolds, again pretending to be Georgia, responded to this message, saying that she had stayed out with friends and that she would be home later, adding, My phone is dying too. Not overly concerned by this message, Steve and Lynette went about their day. They knew Georgia had her first driving lesson the next morning, and that she would be home in time for that. As this was happening, Jamie Reynolds was loading up his stepfather's silver Toyota van for what he claimed was a camping trip. He contacted Georgia's sister Scarlett to say that he was going away for a few days, meaning he would be unable to help search for Georgia. Reynolds then sent a message to Georgia's phone, showing concern for her safety and whereabouts before leaving. After Georgia failed to return for her Tuesday morning driving lesson, and having not heard from her since Monday morning, on the morning of Tuesday the 28th of May, Stephen Lynette Williams called the police and reported Georgia missing. They informed police that Georgia had last been to Jamie Reynolds' house before going out with friends, although they were unable to give police the names of Georgia's friends. As Jamie Reynolds was suspected to have been the last person to have seen Georgia alive, Police visited his home. The family stood at their living room window and watched as the police cars raced to Reynolds' house. Police knocked on the door, but after nobody answered, they put the door in. When Steve Williams, by now a detective constable in West Mercia Police, was informed of this development, he immediately became suspicious. As a police officer, he knew that police would not take such drastic measures at an early stage unless there was reason to suspect that something was seriously wrong. Police searched the house, but there was no sign of Jamie Reynolds or George Williams. As police searched the house for clues, it was not long before they found a digital camera in the house, but all of the files had been deleted. Officers took the SD card to the police station to recover the files, but nothing could have prepared them for what they were about to see. When police officers retrieved the files on Reynolds' SD card, they could not believe what they found on it. The first few photographs showed Georgia Williams posing for photographs as Reynolds had led her to believe. Next were photographs of Georgia standing on a case, with a rope around her neck, smiling cheerfully as Jamie Reynolds continued taking photographs. Then came the grim discovery. Reynolds kicked away the box on which Georgia had been standing, leaving her hanging from the rope with her hands tied behind her back. All the while, Reynolds continued taking picture after picture as the pretty redhead fought for life. After her death, Reynolds photographed George's naked body in every room in the house before sexually assaulting her body in every conceivable way over the next few hours. Police then had the unenviable job of informing the Williams family of George's demise. Steve Williams promptly vomited upon hearing the news, while Lynette and Scarlett were frantic and hysterical. Police, however, did not know where Jamie Reynolds was. What they did know was that his stepfather's van was missing. West Mercia Police alerted police across the UK to the registration of this vehicle. The silver Toyota van was quickly located in Glasgow, Scotland, nearly 300 miles from Wellington. On Wednesday the 29th of May, Jamie Reynolds was arrested outside of a Premier Inn in Glasgow city centre, but there was no sign of Georgia Williams with him. Scottish police asked Reynolds directly, where is Georgia Williams? Reynolds simply answered, I don't know. Reynolds was transported back to Shropshire to be questioned by police. During his questioning, he denied any knowledge of Georgia's whereabouts, insisting that Georgia had voluntarily left his home to meet other friends, and that he had not seen her since. Police continued to search Reynolds' home and found an abundance of all kinds of evidence, including a possible motive for George's death. They found Reynolds' notebook used in the planning of the murder. Reynolds had made a note of George's access code and reminded himself to sign off messages with three kisses. Officers found on Reynolds' laptop an electronic library of 16,800 images and 72 videos of extreme pornography, including snuff films which depicted the death and sexual defilement of women. The young man had also written no fewer than 40 graphic stories in which he described fatal attacks on young women. 
many of whom he knew personally, whose bodies were then sexually assaulted. The method of these murders was most often strangulation or asphyxiation, predominantly by hanging. Police found one such story, entitled Georgia Williams in Surprise, in which he fantasised about trapping, killing and abusing Miss Williams after luring her to his home. Reynolds's obsession with extreme pornography did not end there. He had created digitally modified images of girls in the stories, adding nooses around their necks and adding some form of sexual element to the pictures. Although the whereabouts of George's body were still unknown, police had retrieved CCTV footage of Reynolds' silver van the day after George's death. On the morning of Monday the 27th of May, he was captured on CCTV at the Telford petrol station filling up the van. George's body lay in the back of the van. Later that day, Reynolds was recorded on CCTV at the Odeon Cinema in Wrexham, Wales, where he stopped to watch The Fast and the Furious 6. It is understood that a few weeks before George's death, Reynolds had asked her to accompany him to the cinema to watch the film, though she politely declined as she had a boyfriend at the time. He was next seen checking into the Premier Inn in Glasgow, where he would later be arrested. Unfortunately, there was no footage of Reynolds between Wrexham and Glasgow, and he was maintaining his innocence. Because of Reynolds' refusal to divulge any information on George's whereabouts, West Mercia Police made an appeal on BBC's Crime Watch in relation to any sightings of the silver Toyota van between Wrexham and Glasgow. Incredibly, the appeal was a success. Some viewers reported having seen the van in the hills in North Wales. It had become stuck in mud on a mountain path. The path was surrounded by woodland. Some passing motorists stopped to help Reynolds get his van out of the mud, and one viewer was able to provide photographic evidence. Police deduced that this may be where George's body may have been deposited, so they demanded that a full search of the area be conducted. On Friday the 31st of May 2013, police made a grim discovery. The body of Georgia Williams was found in a remote stream. Her body had badly decomposed having spent four days exposed to the ravages of nature. Jamie Reynolds was formally charged with the murder of Georgia Williams. After George's body had been returned to Shropshire, Steve and Lynette had to identify their daughter. Because her body was so badly decomposed, Steve Williams refused to allow anyone other than Lynette to see Georgia. He claimed in interviews that he wanted Georgia's family to remember her as she was in life, not as she was in death. A post-mortem concluded that Georgia had died as a result of pressure being applied to her neck, probably by a ligature. On the 14th of June, Georgia's funeral was held at All Saints Church in Wellington. As a member of the local air cadets, many of her friends provided a guard of honour at the church. At a hearing at Birmingham Crown Court on the 2nd of October 2013, Reynolds denied murdering Georgia Williams. On the 2nd of December, on what should have been the first day of his trial, Reynolds changed his plea to guilty, after six months of denying any involvement in her death. After he pleaded guilty to George's murder, it was disclosed that he had made attempts to commit similar crimes as early as 2008. In January 2008, when he was still 17, Reynolds lured a 16-year-old girl to his home on the pretext of assisting him with a media project. After the girl declined to go upstairs or even into the kitchen, he attempted to strangle her. She escaped by fighting him off and informed the police. Reynolds was arrested for assault but later released with a final warning. Shortly after the incident, his stepfather informed police that Reynolds had been developing a growing obsession with violent sadistic pornography since the age of 14 and even handed in digitally modified images of women being strangled. One of these images depicted the teenage girl he had attacked. Police dealt with this severe incident by referring him to the West Mercia Youth Offender Service and the Adolescent Mental Health Service. A psychiatrist who assessed Reynolds concluded that he posed a significant risk to others on the basis that he had progressed from viewing sexually violent pornography to seeking to enact it. Despite the psychiatrist's assessment, the police chose not to take any further action believing the case had been, in their words, suitably resolved. Three years later, in 2011,
He deliberately crashed into a work colleague's car after she rejected his romantic advances. Police were notified, but because officers investigating the incident did not perform background checks on Reynolds, no link to the 2008 case was made. Sometime later, a photograph of the young woman was found on Reynolds' computer. The image had been digitally modified with the addition of a noose around her neck, and she appeared in one of his many graphic stories. In February 2013, three months before he killed Georgia, Reynolds lured an unnamed teenage girl to come to his home while his parents were away. Two days before the girl arrived, Reynolds created an image of this girl, adding a noose around her neck and her hands tied behind her back. He locked all the doors in the house. He tried to persuade her to stay the night at his house, but she refused. As she grew increasingly scared, she began screaming and threatened to jump out of a window. Reynolds realised that his plan had failed and pretended to find the keys, which he claimed to have mislaid. The girl left the house physically unharmed. The girl had a lucky escape, as no doubt Reynolds planned to hang her. He had written a reminder to himself to remove the oar from the loft, the cable ties out of the drawer, and to put the trousers back in the wardrobe. Two months later, in April, just weeks before he killed Georgia, Reynolds began writing a story starring the unnamed girl who had visited his home in 2013. Unlike the previous two incidents, this incident was not reported to the police. Reynolds was summoned back to court on the 19th of December. Steve Williams said he watched Reynolds before he entered the courtroom, as he laughed and joked with the court staff, showing no remorse for the distraction he had caused. However, his demeanour quickly changed when he entered the courtroom, becoming almost meek and childlike. The presiding judge, Mr Justice Wilkie, passed Reynolds' sentence. Taking into account Reynolds' previous attempts to commit similar crimes, and a psychiatric assessment which stated that he had the potential to become a serial killer, Justice Wilkie passed a whole life order, meaning Reynolds would never be released from prison. At only 23 years of age, he became one of the youngest offenders in British criminal history, condemned to end his life in prison with no hope of release beyond the onset of terminal illness. Outside Stafford Crown Court, George's family addressed the press and said that there was no sentence with which they would ever be satisfied, as it would never bring Georgia back. Steve Williams went on to explain that the one thing that would always cause the family grief was the fact that although Reynolds was condemned to spend the remainder of his life in prison, he still had the one thing he had denied Georgia. Life. He could still have contact with his parents whereas the Williams family would never again see smiles or laughter from Georgia. In April 2014, four months into his sentence, Reynolds appealed against the severity of his sentence on the grounds that his age and guilty plea had not been taken into consideration. Six months later, in October, the Court of Appeals ruled that there was no basis on which it could be reasonably argued that the whole life order was not necessary and that the sentence was just. In the summer of 2017, Reynolds' legal team announced that he would be lodging a fresh appeal to the European Court of Human Rights. As of 2020, however, his case has not been heard. After it was disclosed that Reynolds had attacked previously and that police had been aware of the dangers he posed, the Williams family asked that an investigation into the police's handling of Reynolds be carried out. A report prepared by Devon and Cornwall police indicated that there had been missed opportunities to stop Reynolds before he progressed to murder. In October 2015, six officers of the West Mercy Police were issued with misconduct notices in relation to the inadequate responses to the 2008 and 2011 incidents. J. Dean Dunning, the best friend of George's elder sister Scarlett and a former classmate of Jamie Reynolds, whose images had also been modified in a sexually violent manner, of which police had been aware for five years, has accused West Mercia police of giving Reynolds too many chances at the expense of protecting the public. Both Miss Dunning and the Williams family have concluded that if police had dealt with Reynolds adequately in 2008, Georgia Williams would still be alive. After the publication of the report, Steve Williams resigned from the police force, unable to continue serving alongside the officers who had failed to protect his youngest daughter. David Shaw, Chief Constable of West Mercia Police, 
issued an apology to the Williams family and Jadine Dunning for failing to protect the public from Reynolds. Since their daughter's death, Steve and Lynette Williams have established the Georgia Williams Trust, a charity which seeks to help young people pursue their passions and dreams with the assistance of grants and partnerships, a fitting tribute to the lively, passionate and vibrant Georgia Williams.